Hello and welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are doing good. Today is 30th May 2020. And I would like to start today's uh, discussion with uh, this quote by John F. Kennedy. Man is still the most extraordinary computer of all. And the main reason is human mind. Dear friends, I see human mind as one of the most advanced technology of this world. I'm not sure about the universe, but the world that we know. Nothing can compare to human mind, isn't it? And uh, the interesting thing is that there is no manual for human mind, right? If you buy a, a technological gadget like a washing machine or television or your computer or anything, you get a manual about how to operate that particular thing. But uh, there is no manual of human mind. But there are a few systems, uh, there are a few ancient as well as modern ways if we follow those systems, if we follow those techniques, then we can achieve whatever we want using this latest technology that is human mind. With this, dear friends, Study IQ has uh, created a course, a smart course. And this smart course is designed by some of the best faculties of our country. This smart course is particularly designed for civil services examination. To find out more about it, download our mobile application on your phone. Till 31st May, that is uh, today and tomorrow, these are the last two days. If you want to make the most out of this installment offer that you can see on your screen. From 1st June, this scheme or this offer will kick in. I have already shared the PDF of today's lecture on my Telegram channel. You can follow me on Facebook. There are so many students out there, they are not aware about this uh, series and if you think that this series, if you believe that this series will help those students, then please make sure that you share this lecture with those students. If you genuinely believe that you have learned something from today's discussion, then you can support us by hitting the like button and you can also support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Dear friends, on our table, we have three articles uh, today. Uh, today is Saturday, as we all know, so we don't get that many articles uh, on Saturdays. But I have two articles from the Hindu newspaper. The first one is about India-Australia relationship. The second one is about this India-China standoff that's going on. We have one news item as well that you can connect with uh, this editorial. And then I have one article from Times of India. This article is written by Union Home Minister Amit Shah. There are a few important points here. We are going to analyze these points. So let's crack on with uh, the first one. This one is about India and Australia relationship. Anchoring ties with Canberra, the virtual way. India and Australia, we are going to have a virtual summit on 4th June 2020. Because of this coronavirus thing, physical meeting is not possible at present. As far as India and Australia relationship is concerned, one thing that is very common that... Uh, uh, connects uh, these two countries with each other, right? Uh, it may look not that important to you, but it is a very important thing, and that is cricket, right? Cricket is uh, a thing that connects. Cricket is a sport or a game that connects uh, Australia and India. As we all know that uh, our players, they do visit Australia. Their players come here to play cricket, and there are like millions of people in Australia as well as in our country. They are a diehard follower of cricket so this game is connecting these two countries apart from that uh, indian ocean is a common thing then we have students uh, exchange program particularly indian students visiting australia they are going there for uh, their uh, higher education and uh, every year there are so many students right in thousands they do visit australia and when they spend few years over there um, some of them they prefer to stay there some of them they come back uh, so those students who are staying there they are also part of indian community then they in future they become part of australian community so that is a common bridge uh, those students who come back right they make friends over there they when they come back uh, in few years few of their friends australian friends they do visit india so these are a few things uh, that are not discussed here but uh, this this things play a very important role because the most important thing in any diplomatic relationship is is uh, people to people contact right when you have a good people to people contact
then you can take that relationship to any extent. You can take it to, at, you know, sky is the limit for this sort of relationship where you have people to people contact is strong. So at present, we can safely say that India and Australia, we have good people to people contact, but uh, still we have not reached our peak yet right there are so many things that we can do together um, at bilateral level as well as multilateral level there was a time when india was not that much important for australia but those days are now history at present india ranks extremely high on australia's diplomatic radar almost all australian australia's recent uh, prime ministers uh, julia gillard tony abbott Malcolm Turnbull have visited India. Mr. Scott Morrison, the person that you can see on your screen, he's going to be, you know, he's the current Prime Minister of uh, Australia and he's the one who is going to have a virtual meeting with our current Prime Minister Narendra Modi on 4th of June. So Mr. Morrison was going to visit us back in January 2020. But remember, in January time, January 2020, at that time, Australia was going through this devastating bushfire. Let me tell you one more interesting thing that, of course, you'd be aware about this thing, but very quickly, this is, let's say, our Earth. So we have Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. So Australia is part of Southern Hemisphere. So in January time, we are going through winter the same time Australia or the Southern Hemisphere nations, they are going through summertime. So as you can see on your screen, uh, right, uh, this is a map of Australia. Let me take you through some important points here. So you will observe that uh, Darwin and then you can see here big cities like Brisbane, Sydney, uh, Canberra. Canberra is uh, the capital of Australia. And apart from that, other big cities, Brisbane, uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, all these cities are coastal cities, isn't it? Australia is a very big country. You can see Tropic of, Can uh, Tropic of Capricorn uh, is passing through Australia. And roughly it divides Australia into two equal pieces, roughly speaking, right? Uh, just for your understanding. Then Australia is a continent as, uh, and it's also a nation as well. Australia is, uh, I think, uh, three times or more than that, uh, bigger than our country, India. And uh, Australia is also known as uh, island continent. On the eastern side, you find Pacific Ocean. On the western side, you find Indian Ocean. And Indian Ocean is a common thing that connects, uh, it is one of the common things that connects India and Australia. So whenever it comes to Indian Ocean's security, free movement of goods, of people in Indian Ocean, then Australia becomes a stakeholder country. Nowadays, we know that China is. China is not a country that shares its border with Indian Ocean, but China is getting more significant here because China is building ports and uh, military ports. In fact, it has built a military port in Djibouti. So China is building infrastructure in various different cities. So Chinese presence basically has increased in Indian Ocean. And this is a matter of concern for all Indian nation countries. If not all, then definitely few. And Australia and India are uh, one of the nations. Uh, they are worried about Chinese presence here. So this is, this is a common thing that connects India and Australia. As far as COVID-19 pandemic is concerned, Australia has done quite well. Mr. Modi travelled to Australia back in 2014. That was a very significant, very important milestone in the relationship between India and Australia because it was somewhere around, uh, what, 32 years ago, uh, 32, 33 years ago, where back in 1986, our then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi visited Australia. And after that, after 28 years of that visit, uh, Prime Minister Modi became the, the latest uh, Prime Minister to Prime Minister of India to visit Australia. So that was a big booster. It electrified the relationship between both the nations. And as I told you, we have some common points of interests and values, convergence of interests and values. We are both a democratic countries, right? Uh, uh, both nations are, as I told you, we have good relationship with each other. Then China is a common thing. 
then COVID-19 is again a matter of concern for both nations and for the whole world, of course. World Health Organization's not that good performance is also a matter of concern for both nations. Then we have um, a few days ago, I told you this thing that uh, remember that Australia is a very brave, courageous country that Australia said that there should be a thorough investigation of this whole coronavirus chapter. Uh, China was not happy with this statement, but later on, European Union joined Australia. And at present, we know that more than 120 country plus, they have supported this resolution that we need to have a proper, thorough investigation about uh, this whole coronavirus eruption and co coronavirus uh, thing, right? How it spread and all those things. So Australia played a very important role in that thing as well. Then we have one thing called Quad. Quad is Quad or Quadrilateral. It's a group of four nations. One is India. Then you have Japan. USA. And of course, Australia. So these four nations have formed a group called Quad, right? These are the four corners of this group and the target here is they are not saying openly but their target is china to make sure that china is reigned china is controlled china is leashed right uh, is tamed that's what these four nations are, are trying to achieve india and australia we have this mutual logistics support agreement so in layman's word how it works is let's say if a australian naval ship if it is somewhere in indian ocean and if it requires some sort of food or fuel or any other thing then it can access indian facilities and it can get all those things and then vice versa we can get the same thing i have one question for you very important question a few days ago this thing was in news it's a big news i'm not sure how many of you have uh, came across this news but i want you guys to do a little bit of research on this thing because i think you may find a question mcq maybe in your upcoming prelims examination based on uh, this particular item so the question is between india and australia a, th a, a talk is going on in background that both nations uh, may have or will sign a pact and this pact will allow australian military to visit our andaman and nicobar military facilities and india will get access to a particular island of Australia. So can you give me the name of that island where we can access the military base of Australia in that particular island? Stick your answer in the comment section. If you have to do a little bit of research, then do it. But as I told you, this one is important for you and I want you guys to locate that particular island. I'll give you a hint that island is in Indian Ocean, right? So that's everything that I can give you for now. Last April, Australia and India conducted Oz Index the largest bilateral naval exercise and there are further developments on the anvil including australia's permanent inclusion in malabar exercise with japan in addition when it will join so this will this if australia joins malabar then this will be um, you know a sort of a big boost for quad then we will also uh, hopefully in this uh, upcoming 4th june visit when I say visit, I mean to say this uh, summit, right? Uh, this virtual summit that we are going to have. I think we will upgrade our 2 plus 2 as well. 2 plus 2 was limited to secretary level. Now we will have it, uh, we will, uh, you know, take it up to a next level where foreign and defense ministers of both nations will have a 2 plus 2 meeting. Health, food and education. Education, we have already talked about, right? Uh, health if, as far as health is concerned, the most important thing at present is coronavirus. So, Australia's fight against coronavirus is led by two doctors from our country, right? They are basically from India and they are living in Australia now. So, we have uh, Kshitij Kapoor and SS Vasan. These are the two uh, leaders uh, of Australia's fight against COVID-19. So, this again is a very strong point. Uh, that defines our relationship on your screen you have this uh, photo his name is uh, anthony pratt uh, he, he is uh, the owner of uh, pratt industries and he's one of australia's richest businessmen he has talked about uh, dtc cpg that means direct to consumer consumer packed goods and this includes this food items uh, that we can create and uh, supply to each other 
each other's market. So that's everything about India and Australia. Now, dear friends, the uh, second topic is about awful silence. So this one is about India and China. Now, uh, we have talked about India and China. We were talking about it yesterday as well, a few days ago as well. We have gone through maps and so many things. So I'm not going into all those details, but there are a few things, uh, right, that I find important here. The number of Chinese soldiers, the aggression with which they have dealt with Indian soldiers, as well as the number of points of conflict indicate a strategized action by Chinese commanders. It is also said that this is one of the most serious uh, standoff between India and China that we have seen in the last few years. And both governments have been responsible enough and I think mature enough as well that uh, we have not issued any sort of aggressive nonsense uh, statements. We have uh, been very diplomatic, right? Uh, we have been very careful in choosing the words uh, for each other. So, so far the comments have are, are we can safely say they are sober in nature. We are going through this news item. Remember that the USA offered that it is ready to play as a mediator between India and China. We don't need that for various different reasons. The one reason is that already relationship between India and beg your pardon, USA and China, they are not at their best at present, right? In fact, they are at their lows or worst at present. Second thing, once you allow someone to enter, then you cannot ask them to leave that easily. So that's going to be a permanent or a, for a long term issue when it comes to then in future, when it comes to India and China, then we have to always consult, you know, USA will be a party. And if they disagree, then that will create an issue and all those things. So this are the two points. The third point, the most important one is that we are neighboring countries. We are going to have issues, right? Uh, Every day is going to be a different day. Every year is going to be different. Our relationship is, in a way, quite strong, right? We have good trade relationship. We have good investment relationship. People-to-people -people contact is reasonably good. Historical relationship, cultural relations. There are so many things. You know, India and China relationship is not just about uh, this LAC. It is far more than that. LAC is just part of one thing. And it, it does not define the whole relationship. And we have so many agreements between us as well. So we will use those agreements. We will use this bilateral relationship. And we both nations are capable enough to sort out this sort of small differences. And all our officials have said the same thing. That differences should not turn into or result into dispute. We don't need to take this thing to a dispute level. There are a few th tactics uh, that China will play, of course, but we have to learn to uh, to tackle it. We have to learn to defend ourselves, and sometimes you have to show a bit uh, of aggression as well. So India is capable of playing every trick, uh, right? So we are not a, uh, we are not a vulnerable, weak country. Neither is China. So, uh, and both these nations are well aware about this thing as well. There are three points here, right, that we find in this editorial f that beyond this it must make a full assessment of what china's final aims are so there are three points the first one it is saying that uh, the summer uh, forget about this uh, statement basically yeah. coronavirus episode you know yesterday we were talking about this thing that this is a, a a sort of tactic of chinese leadership to to draw attention of uh, the people of china to to another topic so this is one reason Second thing is infrastructural push for roads and bridges. Now, China has created good amount of infrastructure, but when India is creating, it is creating, uh, you know, it is not feeling, it is feeling a sort of uh, insecurity or jealousy or uh, it could be their military tactic. And uh, then you have this um, one more problem that we are building good relationship with USA. So this is, again, something that China cannot uh, handle. So these are the three things, right? Uh, you can take it uh, from Australia point of view. You get means you can add Australia here, Quad here, Japan here, and this sort of things as well with this third point. So I hope uh, things are clear. Now let's move on to the next item. Now before I start uh, discussion on this undoing six decades in six years, let me tell you a few things, uh, right? This is very important for you to understand. Whenever you find any article written by union minister or 
uh, chief minister or prime minister or any of your states uh, uh, state minister right uh, then that article is important for you the reason is you will find a touch there will be a touch of politics but most of the items maybe 80% plus items will be important for you official points official statements official data that you will get in this sort of articles written by various different ministers if you find article i'm not saying that uh, if you find article let's say if uh, congress is not a ruling party at present as far as central government is concerned so if rahul gandhi or sonia gandhi or any other political politicians if they write an article then that's not that much important for you because means you can go through it i'm not saying just about congress this applies to any party so let me make it very brief here the reason why we discuss articles from ministers is because you find official points from there right uh, from those uh, articles and you are going to find a little bit touch of politics but we can always uh, you know pay attention to the important things and we can reject filter those unnecessary or political items so we are going to do the same thing with this article as well okay so this article we find in today's time for times of india is because uh, modi government 2.0 has completed its first full year so in this first full year or the first anniversary of 2.0 we'll find few points uh, the things that modi government has achieved in last 6 years so here one thing that i find positive is this ability to reach targets not all but in few sectors or i think in many sectors government has demonstrated its ability to achieve targets like road construction then you have this space missions and other things there was a time when india was in this fragile fragile five economy but now india is uh, fifth largest economy of the world then as well means that does not mean that we have achieved everything we have to achieve so many things there are so many things we are still uh, home to uh, the poorest of the poor people in the world as far as terrorism is concerned to an extent we can safely say that uh, we are more safe now we are more secure now but this is again is a thing this is not a goal this is uh, a sort of uh, you know it's a journey you have to every day you have to do something new something you know learn something so this is how you and terrorism and terrorism and terrorist uh, different thing terrorist is a physical person carrying a gun or bomb or something and trying to kill people terrorism is a sort of ideology so you can hate or elimin- eliminate ideology this sort of negative ideology with positive ideology only so this front as well we are doing quite great making sanitation a habit uh, swachh bharat abhiyan i'm not saying that india is a clean country but one thing that i believe that I, this is my personal observation you can disagree with this if you want but i think that uh, people are more aware about uh, swachhta or cleanliness now than they used to be earlier on um lives of village poor farmers uh, you know that means it has transformed i would disagree with amit shah here uh, the reason is uh, you know few days ago when this economic uh, stimulus package was uh, declared and in this uh, stimulus package uh, we found some reforms regarding agriculture apmc and other things so these are positive reforms uh, this reforms have this potential they can change uh, they can they can you know they can change the, the situation of farmers forever then you have to add contract farming with that thing and of course you have to create jobs and services and industries if you really want to change the lives of the farmers so if all those reforms are implemented properly then yes definitely so far okay i would say we have done some things but still there are so many issues of farmers they are still dying so cannot say 100% things are okay here then we have article 370 and uh, 35a is sorted so that's a good point good thing uh, shri ram temple construction green signal given by supreme court yes they have achieved this this was in their manifesto so they have achieved this thing uh, liberating muslim women uh, from the curse of uh, triple talaq again a very important uh, point achieved very important thing achieved for uh, muslim women Uh, caa again i would say that uh, it was uh, necessary uh, right uh, for 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 communities uh, coming from uh, this countries bangladesh uh, pakistan and afghanistan many of you may disagree with me but uh, 
again, I'm just analyzing the things that you can see on your screen. We can all have our own personal opinion, but it should be based on facts and uh, realities and things like that. But okay, Ayushman Bharat. It has it one of the largest uh, health insurance scheme in the world. It has helped so many. Uh, people around our country and a few days ago in daily financial news analysis we were analyzing its figures so it's huge right uh, this thing is huge and we need to refine it uh, a bit more all the things that we are discussing here most of them right uh, it's not that uh, these things are means Aishman Bharat good thing but still we need to refine it Ujwala scheme very good still needs refinement so it's it's always it's all about journey it's not a it's not a goal it's not just a target that you achieve and that that's everything you have to keep on improving this thing same thing goes with jantan account remember we were talking about jantan account a few days ago that it has helped government to transfer this 500 rupees to uh, women account holders but so many accounts were not requiring this money but still they have received it so there is always room for improvement then the 6000 financial assistance not that big but something is better than nothing uh, many important bills were passed by both houses of parliament so that's a, a good thing that again is in a way achievement of the government terrorism has been blunted through uapa and nia act uh, our image uh, as a nation has uh, changed in last uh, six years of course uh, it has uh, it has changed. Uh, it has changed for good. Uh, FDI in civil aviation, reducing corporate tax was a very important decision. Merger of banks, moratorium on NBFC loans, reforms in Companies Act, uh, support for MSME, these are the things. Then Bru uh, Riang refugee issue was sorted out. It was going on for decades. And now we have a chief of uh, defense staff that this was a demand for decades. Now we have it. Uh, India decided uh, to not join RCEP. That was again a good decision. Foreign investment was not only attracted by creating defense industry corridor. It has also saved millions of crores of foreign exchange. As far as RCEP is concerned, the two reasons, predominant reasons are, one is uh, to protect our dairy farmers and uh, our small industries. And the second thing is uh, this huge, uh, uh, what do we say, bilateral in, in this, if you see bilateral trade um, of, of this 15 countries of RCEP in India, then you find that it was heavily t tilted in their favor rather than in our favor. Pension schemes for farmers, laborers and small entrepreneurs. Uh, Jal Shakti, we have new ministry now that looks after dedicated, it is dedicated for water conservation and promotion. Uh, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana, many states are opting out of it. Uh, uh, that's a problem. Uh, many farmers are not getting uh, their proper claims, so that's a problem. More refinement is required. So far, so good. MSP, uh, 1.5 times. Again, refinements are required. Ujwala, Sobhagya scheme is there. Swach Bharat Abhyan uh, for ODF. Aspirational district development, these other things. And uh, 20 lakh crore rupees package was announced in recent past. Uh, 60,000 crores have been transferred to laborers farmers widows elderly and differently abled people in last two months separate provision for 40000 crore for M mg narega uh, ppe kits so we were importers of ppe kits ventilators n95 till april but now we produce some 5 lakh ppe kits 2.5 lakh n95 masks on daily ba on daily basis and we are also uh, producing ventilators in quite good numbers we have created uh, more than million corona beds and uh, uh, lockdown was implemented on right time. So these are the few important points. Uh, I have taken you guys uh, from a bird's eye view point. Bird's eye view, isn't it? Uh, we have gone through it very quickly, a quick glance. Now you can think about it, uh, right? Uh, so far what you know about these schemes and you can, if you have notes and if you have uh, some books where you find these schemes, then you can quickly revise them as well. And uh, then you have this news items on your screen, right? Uh, GDP growth uh, slows to 11-year low of 4.2%. Uh, uh, core sector not doing that great. GST Council is going to meet in June. Lockdown 5.0 for 13 cities. Yesterday we were talking about this editorial, remember? So you find this in news today. 
Delhi records uh, 1,000 plus cases, uh, second day in a row. And uh, Prime Minister Modi has also addressed the nation on this first anniversary of his second term. So go through those points as well. And this one is about India and China. Basically, our expert diplomats, they are saying that uh, problem is not tension, is unlikely to escalate because both nations are sensible enough. And then on your screen, uh, we have uh, Major Suman Gwani. Major Suman Gwani is the winner of this prestigious United Nations Military Gender Advocate of the Year Award. Uh, so, big salute uh, to Major Suman Gwani. And that's everything for today's discussion. Thank you very much. I'll see you with daily financial news analysis. Till then, enjoy your studies. God bless you all. Jai Hind.